Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Monday, April 5th meeting of the MSA D6 Board of Directors. Mrs. Smith, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Julie Anderson. Present. Yes. Lindsay Atkinson. Excused. Julie Bruni. Here. Nathan Carlo. Present. Erica Kreutz. She's here. Okay. She is here. She is here. Robert Deacon? Here. Ellen Dakotas? Here. Trevor Houston? Present. Donald Moran? Here. James Moses? Here. John Sargent? Here. Elizabeth Forresteri? Here. The Ryder? Excused. Shayla Harriman? Here. You do have quorum with 10 votes present. Thank you. Would you please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Before we go on any further, I do want to let people know I was informed that Spectrum is down in several of our towns, so we're unable to live stream tonight. But the, we, I believe we are still on uh, TV and uh, our recording of this video will be posted as soon as possible. Um, with that, uh, do we have a motion to accept the agenda? Moved by Mr. Sargent, seconded by Mr. Cotus. All in favor? Opposed? One opposed, Mr. Deacon. And we have three um, citizens signed up for public comment this evening. Uh, first is Amy Proctor. Good evening. Thank you all so much for the time to uh, speak to you. Um, I wanted to start off and just thank you all so much for all the great work you've done in um, keeping our schools in this year hybrid. It's been um, just a really um, great uh, compared to other school districts. I have friends in several, but um, the reason I'm here, I just um, I have a sixth grader who is in school uh, week two, five days a week. It's going really well, um, and so I'm also very grateful for that. And my question is just what's next? What is um, the next phase for bringing more um, grades in at the five days a week and the plans that are um, happening for um, full-time return to school in the fall? Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have Rachel Have you? Good evening. I had emailed this over, so you may have seen this already, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to be here, but I was able to make it. And I just wanted to let you know that um, I watched the school board meeting, the last one, and I saw that the resolution was passed to ask the governor and other agencies to review guidelines for returning to school. So I'm happy to see this forward motion. And I was wondering if you'd be able to tell me what the plan is going forward. Um, I know that when the schools were shut down in the district, there was teachers and staff working on putting plans in place. They had multiple plans, you know, um, a, different plans in place to move forward if different things happen. So um, right now, since the teachers are full time doing um, teaching, synchronized, synchronized learning, I was wondering who is going to put this into motion. Um, so the year is almost done and summer will be here before you know it. And I'm wondering how we can be sure that we're gonna be ready to go full time for a fall. Um, I also am willing to help out in any way that I, that I can. If there's something that um, parents can do to get these things rolling faster, I would wanna know about that. So um, just thank you for listening to me and um, I am strongly in support of going back to school 100%. Thank you. Thank you very much. And last but not least, we'll hear from uh, Maury Hill. My apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. You correct. You pronounced that correctly. Um, I'm here because um, I was quite disturbed by last week. Um, I had sent a, an email, my husband and I had written an email and we had asked that it be read. Um, I do have that email with me. Um, I will say that um, 
I think that you've all done a great job in terms of trying to manage during an unusual time, a time that's unprecedented. So um, let me, shall I just read my email? Please do, and it also is included in the minutes of that meeting as well. Thank you, all right. Uh, to whom it may concern, my name is William D. Hill, that's my husband, and I, um, I'm actually reading it on behalf of both of us. Uh, my husband taught composition and literature at Berkeley College of Music for 23 years. Um, I am Maury Hill. I was a pediatric nurse. I'm prepared at the master's level. Um, I was a pediatric diabetes educator at Maine Medical for 24 years. Although we have no children in the school system, we have always paid our taxes and been proud supporters of the public education system wherever we've lived in the country. We were appalled that some members of the S86 school board were trying to politicize, that was our perception, politicize the governor's COVID-19 school safety guidelines for political ends. Uh, we are similarly appalled that some parents are calling for a complete revocation of COVID-19 safety uh, measures that have been put in place by the governor, Dr. Shaw, and other scientific advisors. And I'm going to throw something else in here. Um, I was very disturbed that the uh, school physician, who is your consultant, was not here and was not able to speak. So I don't know whether he was not he was purposely not invited, or um, you know he just probably said I've said everything. I don't know what he said, but I was just disturbed as somebody who was watching um, from afar that he wasn't here and didn't contribute to the conversation. We go on to say that we both lived through the horrors of the polio epidemic of the 1940s and 50s. We remember the triumph of the Dr. Jonas Salk polio vaccine and finally eradicating polio. We cannot understand the debasing of science in favor of political propaganda. One would think that 550,000 deaths from COVID-19 would make a dent in anyone's consciousness. Rejecting scientific research while being pitted against a pathogen that is apparently smarter and more adaptable than we are is not a good sign. And I'm saying this um, because I'm not adverse to full school in the fall, if that's a possibility, but I think you also have to recognize that there's a new strain out there that looks like it's um, you know, more aggressive and uh, particularly attacking younger people. Because COVID-19 is an equal opportunity killer, destroyer of lives, we strongly recommend the SAD6 school board continue to observe the current COVID-19 school safety guidelines. In fact, we think the school board could best accomplish their mission by making a strong statement that encourages all SAD6 area residents to become fully vaccinated. We would also encourage that the school board to put, put their energies toward full student return to school in September when hopefully herd immunity will have been attained. I also want to add that um, now there is um, a system of free transportation for those people who've been underserved to get their vaccination. So I'll be glad to send that information on to you. It's a 1-800 number. And I think uh, the school board should help everybody get vaccinated and uh, help people understand the importance. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, and, and thank you all for taking the time to, to speak to the board this evening. Uh, moving on, I'll turn the floor over to our student representatives for their report. Hi, so for Bonnie Eagle High School, spring sports have started, and athletes are excited to participate in upcoming games, voting on captains, and working hard to make up for a, a whole season missed last spring. The class of 2022 is selling Bonnie Eagle lanyards. They're selling them for $5 a piece, and anyone purchasing can contact Megan Champagne, myself, Annalise Warner, Emmeline Pendleton, or advisor Mark Lettuff. AP students are nearing the end of their exams and they have started reviewing material, taking practice tests, and doing time questions in pre preparation for tests about a month out. Some AP students have started going to school five days a week if they wish to participate in the in-person extension and were able to during due to class sizes. Students have also started logging on synchronously 
with everything new, there have been some challenges. However, things are starting to look up. With the help from student services, students have started signing up for summer college classes at the main community college and public un university systems. Students have also had the opportunity to sign up for the virtual career fair. Bonnie Eagle High School students, and my apologies if I pronounce this wrong, Tannis Hardy, Delia Haviu, Jacob McDonald, Keegan Mosley, Hayden Sargent, and Mark Goncharv were selected as the WRVC's students of the semester for their programs. The teachers in each program select a student that best represents Westbrook, Westbrook, Westbrook Vocational School. Its core values of respect, integrity, inclusivity, continuous improvement, innovation, and pride. The free breakfast and lunch program has been extended to students through the summer. The high school newspaper, Eagle Times, hosted a March Madness competition in which individuals that correctly guessed the most winning teams in both the men's and women's NCAA basketball tournament received a Dunkin' Donuts gift card. Model UN is sending out information packets for their upcoming conference, and spring sports are beginning to have parent meetings for athletes and their parents to learn more about the expectations and logistics of the upcoming season. Students are also looking forward to April break. And then for Bonnie Eagle Middle School, drama club signups have begun and more information for interested students will be released soon. The 7th and 8th grade Pathfinders teams have started to organize for spring seasons to come. Due to consistency, consistently low numbers with lacrosse, Bonnie Eagle Middle School is opening up its spring sports registration to 6th grade students interested in playing competitive lacrosse. 6th grade students have also returned full time to school the past week and it has been going well. For Buxton Center, March finished with Read Across America activities. On March 15th, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, students wore red and blue. On the 17th was St. Patrick's Day and students wore green. On the 24th was Frog and Toad Day, students dressed as a twin with a friend or friends. On the 26th was Read My Shirt Day, students wore a shirt with words on it. And on the 30th was Llama Llama Red Pajama Day, where you wear your favorite pajamas. The April activity calendar was sent home, first on the calendar, was April 2nd, Autism Awareness Day, Wear Blue. On March 22nd, the fifth graders participated in a 100-day breakout EDU challenge to celebrate being 100 days smarter. Students solve challenges and learn why to celebrate their learning. Students did not realize that if they added up all the school days from kindergarten to now, it was at oh, 1,000 days, not 100, sorry. <laughs> Students were very excited. Teachers have found it and to be an exciting surprise each year. The celebration community distributed stars to all teachers for each student. For each star, the teacher included the student's name and a character trait from the positivity project that the student demonstrated. Stars were collected and displayed on the student walk of fame. It has been fun to watch the students stop and look for their stars in the excitement of reading what their teacher wrote about them. We are happy to have our first, first graders back five days a week. The transition has gone well and students have been excited to meet new friends. Bikes for Books is winding down. Stay tuned as the winners will be drawn next week. For Georgie Jack, they were successful in the celebration of Family Literacy Days on March 30th and the 31st, supported by the Title I program. There has been much support with a collection of five boxes of books to donate toward the Bonnie Eagle Community Book Drive. They've also practiced the Positivity, positivity Project character strengths of love of learning last week and humor this week. For HB Emory Elementary School, they held virtual parent-teacher conferences on March 29th and March 31st, which went off pretty well. They've also begun rolling out Tang Math Spring Math Challenge for students to participate in this spring. Uh, Steve Sorry, Steve Bells also held virtual parent-teacher conferences on March 30th and April 1st, which also went off very well. They're also rolling out the Tang Math Spring Math Challenge for students and Steep Falls PTO just had a flyer book fair. Lastly, for Halls Elementary School and Edna Libby Elementary School, there's no new information, but things are still running smoothly. Great, thank you. Are there any questions or comments for our student representatives this evening? Seeing none, we'll move into the consent agenda, approval of the March 15th and March 29th board meeting minutes, and we have co-curricular appointments which are included on the agenda. Mr. Deacon? I have some concerns about the minutes, uh, specifically the March 29th minutes. Okay. Uh, it says uh, in the proposed uh, minutes that uh, I move to remove item 7 from the agenda. I believe I made a motion to table, not to remove, and I ask that that be corrected to show it's a motion to remove. Uh, not to remove, but to table. 
Uh, reason why I didn't want to approve the agenda earlier and I voted against it was I felt uh, more time would be helpful. Uh, the uh, minutes for this meeting uh, weren't uh, provided along with other materials, although they were provided later. Uh, and I think uh, it would be helpful to review the tape of the meeting uh, to better understand uh, what transpired. So one of the items I have a concern about is that that be corrected to say uh, there was a motion to table rather than to remove. In addition, uh, I have concerns about the conduct of the chair when I asked a question as a point of information about whether or not the uh, school's physician had been um, uh, uh, consulted or invited uh, uh, to attend the meeting, uh, there wasn't a response. And I, so I later uh, moved to table the motion, table that item D7 so that we could offer the school physician an opportunity to present information. Uh, not knowing until after the meeting when you told me that the school physician had uh, declined or refused to attend uh, uh, or present information is the way I understood it when you uh, told me after the meeting. Uh, I think it would have been uh, quite relevant for the board to know uh, that uh, there had been some discussion with the school physician. A community member came up tonight, uh, unknown to me, to raise the same issue about uh, where was the school's physician uh, in this matter. Uh, and I think that uh, the chair could have been more forthcoming in the way he conducted this element of that element of the meeting by indicating that there had been some discussion with the physician and for whatever reason uh, the physician was not going to uh, uh, be present at that night and that you could have shared whatever conversation that was that took place so that the board had a full understanding of what's going on. I think it's important that uh, we give uh, um, respect to uh, authoritative medical uh, opinions in the conduct of the board's operations, with, especially with respect to that item. Uh, and uh, so I would suggest that uh, uh, this item of the uh, minutes be corrected to show that it was a motion to table and not to remove. That's my first consideration. And I have another subsequent to that. We'll hear all your considerations now. Okay, my second consideration is that we uh, suspend the rules for the purpose of uh, considering whether or not to censure the chair for inappropriate uh, handling of the meeting by not properly disclosing that the uh, school's physician uh, uh, had declined to uh, attend the meeting or make a presentation or otherwise not tell the board fully about what conversations took place with the board's uh, physician about uh, item D7 uh, and uh, uh, because I believe that that was important for the board to know in the handling of that particular matter. Whereas my conduct's been called into question, I don't think it's appropriate for me to preside over this piece of the meeting. So I'm going to ask Mrs. Kreutz to preside over this part, if she would be willing. Yes, although the <laughs> technicalities of Robert's rules are uh, not super clear. <laughs> So what, uh, what needs to, do we ex vote to accept the changes? Well, he, he has asked that I be censured for my conduct. Well, I asked two things. First, to correct the minutes to show that it was a motion to table and not the motion to remove. That's item one. The second, that the board uh, 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 suspend the rules for the purpose of consideration of whether or not to censure the, uh, the chair for the handling of the meeting. Uh, do these both need motions and seconds and votes? All right, then, so for the first consideration of uh, altering from remove to table, do we have a second on that motion? Excellent. Uh, is there any discussion? I have a question. Yes, Mr. Sergeant. Do we have a tape of that conversation? available because uh, it got a little heated at that time and I thought initially he asked for remove and then subsequent it was table and I would be interested to hear the tape before we make a decision on this because 
it went back and forth pretty heatedly right there, and uh, I'd like to know what it is before we start making changes. Uh, yes, we can do that. So, do we need to go to take a break? Let's let's take a quick recess, a uh, five minute recess, and we can pull that up. Uh, thank you. Thank you.
All right, are they back on now? Yes, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so Ms. Smith and I both reviewed the video. It is difficult to hear um, as Mr. Deacon's microphone was not on and there was some gavel noise over it, but we both um, heard omit was the language that was used at the beginning of the meeting during the acceptance of the agenda. Omit. omit. So neither table nor remove. We sounds like omit. Uh, is there additional discussion? Yes, Mr. Deacon. Uh, it would be helpful to understand the context in which it was raised that I was trying to get, uh, I felt the board needed uh, to have the uh, school's physician uh, help guide us in the matter. Yes, and that was what was being requested. And uh, so omitting uh, the, uh, that opportunity is a, was the concern. Now, uh, we, we can get a whole bunch of forensic experts to try to enhance the audio or whatever. Uh, I think the real point of what my concern is here is that I was told after the meeting that the uh, school physician uh, had declined an opportunity to make a presentation to the board and my raising the issue at the beginning of the meeting was that I felt that that item D7 should have the input of our medical staff and not having it omitting it or not tabling the motion so that we could get it later was a concern to me because I felt that that medical testimony was important for the board to properly consider the the nature of what was being discussed. So aside from the details of exactly how the motion is characterized, whether it's remove or table or whatever, the real concern that I have is to what extent was the school physician given an opportunity to attend or make a presentation to the board? Did, 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 did he decline? Did he refuse? What was all of that? And to learn after the meeting that he, he had some, that there was some discussion about involving the physician and then it didn't take place, I think it would have been helpful to know that at the beginning of the meeting when I was raising it instead of after the meeting, when the meeting was all over. Whether or not the uh, physician sent an email it is helpful, but I, as I noted during the meeting, a one-way communication isn't as good as a two-way exchange that takes place. So my, my point is that in the, in the item that we were considering, the information from the school's physician I felt was important. And if there had been some discussion about the school physician not making a presentation and not attending the meeting or refusing, I think that would have been important and helpful and not something that should have been disclosed after the meeting rather than during it while we were raising these issues. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further discussion about making the modification to change to table you would you do you still want the minutes amended to say that you requested to table the, the item that's correct. Okay. is there a further discussion all right all those in favor of the edit to modify the minutes to say that mr deacon requested to table all those in favor all, right. all opposed all right the motion fails uh, the second item, yeah. Uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah. Yes. The second uh, request on the table is a request to censure the chair uh, for last week's meeting. Do we have a second? All right, seeing none, that fails. Would you like to take back, take back over, Mr. Houston? Thank you, Mrs. Kreutz. You're welcome. Moving on, um, we'll now entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. Move. Moved by Mr. Carlo, seconded by Mr. Sargent. All in favor? Opposed? Mr. Deacon, opposed? The motion passed. 
And for my report this evening, um, for, for those of you who could attend uh, last Friday, our school board fact-finding tour, I, I am very grateful for the time you spent to tour all but two of our schools. It was great for board members to see the students and teachers in the classroom uh, firsthand and our first graders and sixth graders back, back to school full time. Um, I, I know it was very helpful for me to see all the work that's been done, all the challenges that remain that our administration is actively working on in consultation with, with all of our staff. Um, so I, I did just want to give that update and give anyone, anyone who attended the opportunity to say a few words on their thoughts on that. Mr. Cotis? Thank you. Yes, um, I was um, taking notes while we were going from building to building. And my first comment is that the principals and the staff are incredibly flexible and hardworking. The efforts that they have had to go through in order to uh, accommodate the, ch the children back in are really amazing. Um, the children, you know, were, did have some normal activities, quote unquote, or regular one little, there were two little birthdays being celebrated and they were skipping through the halls. Um, the other pieces, though, are the, uh, my concerns. The custodians are working very, very hard. There were comments that they were exhausted. Um, the numbers in some of the buildings of custodians needed was lower than it should be. Um, they're doing um, a lot of heavy moving. There was uh, a lot of furniture moved. Um, across buildings, um, outside of buildings, into storage units. Um, so that was uh, striking to me. And they are also having to do a lot of extra cleaning, um, especially that was noted in lunch areas because um, they, in order to uh, protect the children and uh, staff from the COVID, they have to separate the groups, and so the one room is used more frequently, and so it's an extra load on the custodians to uh, make the area safe. Um, staff um, are really being asked to do a lot. Um, they reported that they needed longer time to um, orchestrate orchestrate the schedule each day. There are um, still staff out um, every day, and so then uh, working out a schedule to, co to um, accommodate for that is much more difficult. Um, they have to spend more time trying to keep the children in their cohorts so that they're safe and not mixing with everyone else um, so that contact tracing can take place. Um, the number of subs is lower, um, and so that administrators sometimes have to step in and work in the classes too. Um, the biggest piece was space. There's no space. So they have done incredible maneuvers and switched classrooms from one purpose to a totally different purpose. But that was made very clear that the storage space is limited. The ability to modify the classrooms to keep the children safe, if any more numbers come back in right now, is very, very challenging. Um, the meal staff is, again, they are working <laughs> overtime. Not literally. They're working very hard. Sorry. Uh, don't go to the finance office with that. Um, they are really uh, moving across, you know, they're traveling from one building to another. They're pulling carts of food in order to meet the demands in every building. Um, children are eating in their classrooms or in the cafeterias. Um, in some buildings, the staff are eating with the children, and then other times they're eating alone, which, um, you know, that's mental health issues, I think. COVID, so, 
Um, COVID still is um, present. Uh, I think we might need to remind ourselves of that. Um, some teachers have been out several times on 10 day quarantines. Um, the buildings uh, are still sometimes being closed. Um, the nursing staff did report that with their daily um, testing, or I should say their testing, I, that those, the numbers of days that the buildings have to be closed and the number of days that children are out has uh, improved markedly with their consistent testing. Um, and I don't remember. And then just the fact that the number of subs is, is uh, reduced partly because of COVID. So um, I was very glad I had the opportunity to go on this um, expedition um, because, again, it was very clarifying as to how much work everyone is doing to help the children. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cotis. Mrs. Kreitz. Uh, without repeating a lot of what uh, Mr. Cotis pointed out, um, I also got the sense that the staff and the students have really been doing an amazing job accommodating all of the changes and adapting, and there have been a significant amount of changes over the course of this year. Um, and, you know, the, we heard over and over again that there's nothing that everyone wants more than to have the children back. Um, what I also heard over and over was that uh, we're really balancing on the edge here. Uh, we had some administrators tell us that, you know, if they literally had one more or two more students, then they couldn't, they didn't have the space and they couldn't make it work. We heard, um, you know, the, like Mr. Cotas pointed out, the staffing every day, the, just the, the sheer acrobatics that are being done on a daily basis to be able to make sure that the kids are all getting what they need and that people are where they need to be. Um, you know, the staff is really going above and beyond to make it happen with the numbers that they have and it's just a continual challenge literally every single day. Um, and that uh, one of the things that I was struck with was the, uh, with the, the nutrition, um, getting all the students fed, um, you know, bringing more students back, you know, everyone said, we could probably do it, but the scheduling is going to be a nightmare because you can just only put so many people in a room. And so, you know, they would be serving lunch potentially at, you know, and I don't want to put words in, in mouths because it hasn't been worked out, but, you know, potentially as early as 10 or 1030 in the morning. So, you know, we're just, the challenges are not insignificant. You know, I definitely felt that there was an optimism and a hope to try to make things work, but that it was not making it happen was not going to be quick. Uh, those buses are real tight. <laughs> All of our tall board members couldn't sit forward. Um, so it's just, you know, every, every little piece of this puzzle is complicated. And, you know, while we're, everyone's working towards the same end, uh, this is not an easy puzzle to solve. But thank you to everyone who uh, let us visit. It was really wonderful. It's a long trip. My feet were very sore, and I took a nap that afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Deacon? Thank you. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, a very good opportunity for the board to have that tour. Uh, I understand that not everybody can participate due to work, family, or other considerations. It's unfortunate that the entire board was not able to participate. Uh, because I believe that by being there and seeing in person and hearing what the employees told us and that seeing for our own eyes about the, uh, how it all works miraculously uh, after all of the extensive efforts of our staff uh, and, and uh, thinking on the fly, uh, thinking out of the box, um, our, our leadership, our superintendent, the principals, uh, our employee groups, uh, our teachers, our custodians, our food service workers, um, everyone at all levels has done a lot to try to make this work as best as possible in the worst of circumstances. And that by seeing it in person, I think it helps us understand that uh, perhaps none of us uh, like where we are, but we're doing the best we can. And uh, we would all like to move toward another place, but we need to do so in a safe, a way as possible to protect all of us and that uh, I am thankful 
that we have the leadership that we do in our district. Uh, I'm thankful that our superintendent has taken great pains to consult with you know, employee organizations, parents, uh, anyone and everyone to ensure that we get the best possible education in the most difficult of circumstances. And, and I really think that our staff uh, should be given a great deal of um, uh, thanks for uh, being able to do what they've done so far. Certainly, we wish for more. Certainly, we hope it could have been better. But all in all, I think that our district has done uh, a, a very commendable job to try to make this work as best as possible. And for that, I am thankful. Thank you. Any other comments? Mrs. Anderson? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I was one of the board members that could not be there, sadly, due to childcare. Um, so I, I'm sad that I wasn't able to see, see these um, schools with you. I did go to um, HB Emory a couple weeks ago, though. I, I mentioned that in the school board meeting um, last week. And, um, you know, with the resolution that passed, I mean, super pleased that it passed. We all kind of knew, uh, some of us made a, a point that night that most likely it's not going to do anything except for the fact that it's going to bring, um, put some pressure on the state to let them know that we are serious about getting the kids back in school full time as our other um, school districts. Um, and we already know that the Department of Education responded um, and they basically said there's nothing that they can do, that we need to ask the U.S. CDC for guidance. So that to me tells me um, nothing is really going to change from, from the higher up. Um, so my question is really, you know, I'm just making a statement here. I'm not really asking for a, an answer right now, I guess, but, you know, kind of as some of the parents said tonight, what's the next step what's the next plan um, other school districts have set up things like task forces that have brought in state multiple stakeholders um, to try to you know get creative and it sounds obviously with some of um, you know you guys going to these schools that there are still some issues that that could possibly get resolved with some creative problem solving and um, I think it, it might be something to think about in the near future for some sort of maybe advisory ad hoc committee um, to get stakeholders involved in trying to get our schools open. Um, I still have some questions that I feel have not been answered concerning transportation. You know, we know that 24 per bus is not a requirement. So I, my question is, and it still has not been answered, and I feel like it's important for the board to know why we're not getting more students on the bus. So, you know, I'm, you know, reminded that we're elected officials to serve our community and the students. And the CDC has said that we can get schools open full time. I understand we have these certain requirements that we have to follow, but I, I think it would be, you know, in our best interest to really think in the near future about setting up some sort of task force or committee. Uh, if it doesn't happen this spring, let's be looking towards the fall. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to the point of the transportation piece, um, the, the administration has answered that. Um, the reason why the administration has not recommended putting more than 24 students on a bus, because let's say there's 25 students on a bus and one of them tests positive, the whole bus needs to quarantine for at least 10 days. Whereas under the 24 students on a bus and having two windows in the front and two windows in the back halfway down, none of those students need to quarantine. So that's the motivation behind that factor. Um, any board members welcome to make a motion to increase that number, and the board can take a vote, but the administration has um, decided to go along with the recommendations from national transportation authorities. Point of order, Mr. Mr. Chair. I, 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 maybe I'm lost here. Is this on the agenda, or are we would be giving reports simply for the visitations that were made? Now we're, talking to, we're back to talking about resolution and how many people on a bus and et cetera. So if it's not on the agenda, I'm not sure why we're discussing it. You, you are correct um, w with that. Um, unless there's anything that, that pertains directly to what is written on the report, he will move on. Mr. Sergeant. Uh, 
In regards to the tour we took the other day, uh, very informative. And I knew that we had a lot of old buildings. And we had classrooms that were designed in the 60s and 70s and some in the 80s. Uh, our newest school is, what, 10 or 12 years old now, Mr. Chair? Correct. Um, and we have a lot of old buildings. And if any of you parents or people have visited these schools and you've seen how they were set up in the past and how they're set up now, you realize this three-foot rule puts us in a real mind. These classrooms only have so many square feet. And we're going to have to get a smaller than a three-foot rule to get these kids back to school. There's no getting around it. It's just... It just has to do with square feet. And uh, then you have the bus situation. Um, so I would encourage anybody that was interested in this sort of thing is to look at not only just one school, but take the time to try to look at another school and see how the classrooms are and how big they are and how they can redesign today. Um, and then you realize what a problem we have to deal with. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sergeant. Mr. Deacon. Just to clarify, um, uh, we are talking about the, the responsibilities of the board here and the report and the tour that we took place. It's helpful to understand that uh, school board members are not like state representatives, for example, who represent a particular district. Uh, although we're, uh, to, to, to be a school board member, you must be a resident of the town you're elected from, you're voted upon uh, by uh, residents of all of the towns. And even so, uh, we are agents of the state. We do, well, obviously, we uh, need to understand the needs of our residents and our students and our communities. We, we are responsible to the state and uh, to narrowly look at what we do as if we're supposed to represent our community and to do what our community wants is a, a very narrow and not fully appropriate focus on w the basis on which school boards are set up and founded by the state. We are agents of the state and not as focused as, say, a state representative uh, uh, constituency district would be. And as such, we need to keep in mind that we certainly want to uh, pay attention to our communities and listen to them. Uh, and our parents and our students, uh, but we, as a member of a school board, we have a, a, a different responsibility than, say, an elected state representative who, who has a constituent district that is much more a uh, focus of a concern. Thank you. Um, before we move on to the superintendent's report, I, I do just want to take one moment to... Um, briefly address the, the issues that broke at the high school last week. Um, the, the board denounces the, the horrific behavior of this uh, former staff member in the strongest terms. And uh, I, I applaud the two students who came forward um, to report these, th this sexual misconduct on, on, by this employee um, so that it could be investigated and the proper disciplinary action could be taken place. Um, it's my understanding it's currently under investigation by um, local police and the district attorney and, and the employee has since been terminated by MS-86. Um, in, in the future, if, if any, any of our staff members, students, if you, if you experience any form of misconduct, I highly encourage you to report that to the, to the proper authority so that that can be investigated and the proper disciplinary action can be taken um, up, up to and including bringing in law enforcement and the district attorney. Uh, we take these accusations very seriously and we need to make sure we're doing all we can to protect our students and uh, make sure that they have the access to the education that they deserve. With that being said, I'll turn the floor over to the superintendent for his report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So you have listed on the, our agenda, we have um, three teacher resignations. Leah Daniels, elementary teacher, 4-5 at Hollis Elementary School, effective at the end of the 2021 school year. Ms. Lisa Fluke, special education teacher, self-contained at Buxton Center, have been resigned effective uh, August 2020, um, 2021. And Adam Hanick, a gifted and talented teacher in ELA for 6 through 12, located both at the high school and at the middle school. Uh, tomorrow night, I will be at Standish Town Hall uh, doing our annual budget presentation, myself and Mr. Brockman. 
Um, we'll go over there. We'll, that meeting starts at 6 o'clock. Um, we will then, um, on the 21st, be going to Hollis, um, and we also have a date um, on that one to go to Lemington. So this is an annual event. We always go uh, to the communities and talk about our budget, how we got to where we were. It's usually about a 20-minute presentation. We go over highlights um, of what we're doing just to make sure the communities are involved and understand um, where we are with our budget, what those tax impacts look like, and what are the things we're doing to move this district forward for the best interests of our children. Um, you have a report um, in your report, the truancies for March, as well as the new hires and resignations for March. Um, truancies continue to be our concern that we've had, and uh, we have had a number of students return to in-person instruction from remote, and that should um, hopefully curb some of those numbers. Um, but that's been an ongoing issue, which is an ongoing national issue um, as well. We've seen it statewide. Um, truancies are up. Um, for our children, which is unfortunate. Uh, grants received, Georgie Jack Schools received $1,000 grant from the from the kid, Kids Gardening Organization, Grow More Good Grassroots Grant. The funds will be used to revitalize the existing raised garden beds that begin creating an outdoor classroom space. And a donation, we want to thank you, DonorsChoose.org, for donating $568 to Mr. Bashir's uh, project at Hollis Elementary School to get books in the hands of students through the community outreach program. Um, using, I assume, the community outreach van, um, which is kept clean uh, usually by myself, but I am getting some support from um, from other administrators. Uh, thank you for the DonorsChoose.org for a donation of $1,109 to be used for the Math, math Magic Project, a virtual family math week at both Hollis and Georgie Jack. Uh, thank you to DonorsChoose.org for a Honey Can Do shelf rolling steel cart to be used by Ms. Dunham Conway in classrooms at Edna Libby, a value of um, $175. Um, thank you for the anonymous donation of the $20, $50 gift cards to the benefit of the backpack program, Bon Eagle Middle School. And thank you for DonorsChoose.org for don uh, donations of 3D printer pens and materials for classroom projects and differentiated instruction in Ms. Tripp's classroom at Bon Eagle Middle School, the value of $169.06. Also, donors choose org for donations of Oxford twin fastener folders and staples copy paper to be used in Miss Thompson's classroom at the Bon Eagle Middle School and Nestle Waters for a donation of uh, 1,208 ounce Poland Spring water bottles to benefit the MSAD6 Health Service Department, a value of um, $575. Um, just a quick shout out to Ava Doria, who's actually not here tonight. Ava is our board alternate. Uh, middle school student. Um, she attends every meeting on a regular basis. She usually sits in the back corner taking notes and ready to step in when appropriate or if she's needed. And I applaud her for her diligence of being here, um, having seen board reps over a number of years. Um, our two current board reps are outstanding. They make every meeting. They have a wonderful report. And our alternates are in the audience. Our alternate is in the audience every um, meeting as well being ready to take over, and that's a great statement about our students and their commitment to this process and being part of um, uh, the um, organization um, in MS86, and I'm proud of that. And I do want to report um, a little glimmer of hope in that I have att attended several graduation meetings, planning meetings at the high school, so we are continuing to work forward. We have several different ideas. They will be surveying the students. We have ongoing meetings for that, so we are planning a graduation of sorts, and We'll see what that looks like moving forward. But we have lots of excitement discussion and a lot of exciting discussion and students that um, are really interested in having a, an event to culminate the high school experience. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that and we'll uh, hopefully uh, have, we have a couple of really good options. Um, and there's still some real challenges to some parts of it, but we will have a graduation. So that's the exciting part of, of where we are. And I'll handle any questions if there are any from the board. Thank you. Any questions or comments for the superintendent? Seeing none, thank you very much. I will now move on to approval of the district strategic plan as presented to the board on March 29th. Mrs. Kreutz, do you have anything you'd like to add from our presentation? No, I don't think so. We had a good discussion. Uh, we didn't hear, I didn't hear from anyone with any comments or questions, so I'm hopeful that we will be able to pass this unanimously tonight. Very good. Thank you. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved by Mrs. Kreutz, seconded by Mr. Sargent. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. And uh, again, a, a huge thank you to, to the work of Mrs. Kreutz, Mrs. Atkinson, and Mr. Carlo, and our two staff members on that committee for, for almost two years of work.
in getting us to this point. You know, this is the first board approved strategic plan since 1997, and it says a lot about our priorities and where we want to see our school district go moving forward. So I, I thank you very much for your, your many hours of service on this ad hoc committee to get us to this point. With that being said, I'll turn the floor over to Mr. Carlo for the policy committee report of March 15th. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The policy committee convened on March 15th, 2021 at Central Office and all members were present. The committee initiated discussions regarding the Budget Advisory Committee Administrative Procedure and made several tentative amendments to that policy. Further consideration of these amendments was tabled and we resumed our discussion earlier today. In the interest of time, I refer members to the policy committee meeting minutes of that day for the text of these amendments as a more complete report regarding the committee's rationale will be presented at the next board meeting. The committee took up the board's agenda policy, policy BEDB, and made amendments that clarified agendas for committee meetings, and that would also extend authorization to board committees to conduct business via consent agenda. The meeting adjourned just minutes before the board meeting, and I again thank policy committee members for their time and diligence at what was otherwise a fairly lengthy afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I defer for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions on, on um, the policy committee report? Seeing none, do you have anything to add for policies for first reading? No new information. Um, any questions or concerns on policy BEDB? Mr. Cotis. Um, I would like to move that it be returned to the policy committee for further review. Um, it, uh, I am concerned in reviewing it and in reviewing uh, the work of the board, I have um, noted some uh, inconsistencies in our following that policy, and so I think it would be helpful to review it again to see how we can um, ease its consistent implementation by the board. Thank you. Is there a second to the motion? Moved by, uh, seconded by Mr. Sargent. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? I, I guess I should have asked a question. Is, is there something in particular about the um, policy that is in question? Because. Oh, do I answer that? Please, feel, Thank feel free. Um, the, uh, the piece that I'm looking at is the consistent f adherence to the timelines and the procedures needed to complete the agenda for the board. Thank you. Um, with that being said, do you, do you know which way you want to vote, Mrs. Anderson? Vote in, in favor? Okay. okay. Thank you. So the motion passes. Uh, now moving on to policies for second reading and adoption. Mr. Carlo? No changes. Right. And there was a request to t um, move to table BEDH. So before we do that, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to approve policies BCC, JJIB, and KDB. Moved by Mr. Carlo. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Sargent. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? It is unanimous. Um, so Mr. Cotis did come um, to me with some concerns about BEDH, um, so I'll, I'll defer to her. Thank you. Um, my uh, observations, again, um, have to do with the consistent adherence to the policy. Um, this is the policy that is titled Public Comment, um, and I want to determine if we are being consistent in reading the correspondence or emails that we receive, um, the uh, according to Robert's rules and MSMA guidelines, um, it is suggested that all the reading is presented at the board meetings as if requested by the people sending the material to us so that we are more transparent in our work and people will understand what we're doing. If it's read, if it's sent to the board members, um, that has one purpose. But if someone asks it to be read aloud, it has a particular, a different purpose from the person writing the correspondence. 
uh, so I re uh, make a motion that it return to the policy committee for additional review. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Deacon. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll, uh, Mr. Deacon. Yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, many people, uh, uh, school attorneys, for example, recommend against having public participation in meetings. Uh, I think that's wrong. I think we found in this district having public participation in meetings is very helpful, instructive, and important. And whether we're agents of the state or representatives of our community, however you view that, although we are uh, responsible to the state, I think it's important to understand the community in which we serve. And more communication is always better than less. Whether it's communication from our health staff, including our, our town physician, uh, advising us about a particular matter or a parent or anyone else. I think having access and that information shared to the full board and the public is important. When something is read to the board or somebody stands at the podium to make a statement as part of public comment, it's not only are they you know, sharing their own personal view, but they're, they're, they're letting the board and the members of the community and the state which we serve understand their concerns. And it's very important to have more rather than less communication. So although the uh, attorneys uh, across the state uh, have, have previously said, and, and even I believe the Main School Management Association uh, believes that public participation in board meetings has its problems, I think it's a problem that's, that's well worth having uh, to allow people whatever their thoughts, to present it to the board. Because if we don't allow them to present and make sure that their wishes are heard, we're actually creating more problems than we are uh, otherwise solving. So it's, I am a firm believer that we have more communication rather than less. Is it cumbersome? Yes. Is it time consuming? Yes. Is it important? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sergeant. Uh, I realize where the previous speakers are coming from, but in referring to last week's meeting, we had over 46 emails to us, and they were still coming in just before our meeting. And I stopped reading them all about 3.30 in preparation for getting over here. And if we were to read every single one of these into the minutes, we would be here till midnight. And having been on other elected bodies, I can tell you, when you sit here for more than two or three hours, you don't make great decisions when you go after 10 o'clock at night. So sometimes I think it's in the best interest of everybody to put them in the minutes. This is all written out. If you want it, you can read it. And you got the flavor of it at our last meeting and I thought except for a one hiccup it went very well uh, we had some real differences of opinion on what was safe and what was unsafe whether we should open fully or we should go slow there was some compromise made by a number of parties and I think they did a great job um, I hear where they're coming from on this but sometimes when you get close to 50 of them, uh, we would be here till midnight. And I don't think that's realistic. Thank you. Thank you. Is Mr. Cotis? Or maybe uh, Ellen Dakota is going to say the same thing. That, uh, what she said was when people ask to have their uh, comments read, that they be read, sometimes people make comments and they do not ask that they be read. In that case, that would cut down on the number of uh, such uh, communications that take place. Mr. Cotis? Uh, that was what I was going to say. I, I, the, uh, um, there were people who specifically said, please read this aloud at the meeting, and that serves a different purpose that they are requesting we follow for them. Um, and MSMA did suggest, uh, I know that there are different uh, pieces of information, for example, in our handbook, but um, the transparency is what was stressed as being important, especially 
for something as a major meeting like that. So I wasn't asking that all correspondence be read, only when people ask that it be read, or that we have a policy that allows us to have a consistent approach to something like that. Because right now, we're being inconsistent, and um, I think that's important that we can have a reason for deciding not to read or to read when someone requests it of us, because we are not following that path right now. Thank you. Uh, before we move on, I do want to note that in our current policy, reading out messages is not um, in policy. We decided to go along with this back early in the early days of the pandemic as we were meeting virtually. Um, we made this an option and we continued it until recently. Um, there was discussion at the last policy meeting of whether we wanted to put that in policy or not. And it's my understanding it was decided that that should not be included in policy at that time. Um, so we had decided to forego that practice. Individuals are welcome to write in the board. Their comments will be included in the minutes. Um, but, but until the policy is revised, that say anyone who wants to have their comments written, uh, writ, uh, read on, to the record on camera, um, that, that practice will not be, be continuing un unless policy changes. With that being said, um, all those in favor of Mr. Codis' motion to table and remand this to the policy committee? Opposed? For those who are in favor, put their hands up one more time, please. The motion passes as we remand it to the policy committee. Um, with that being said, I'll now turn the floor over to Mrs. Bruni for the negotiations committee reports of March 22nd and March 25th. Thank you. Um, during the meeting on March um, 22nd, we were in executive session to discuss a, um, cons to consider a side letter that may impact the current agreement between the MS86 Board of Directors and the Administrative Association, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Um, we also talked about um, the approval of the revised job descriptions that we're bringing forward. We approved in bringing forward to the board. Those are in your packet. Um, they are all, um, it looks as though they are um, based, they're complete rewrite. So um, hopefully everyone had a chance to review those. And then we had an executive session pursuant to um, one MRSA 40560 to prepare for the upcoming negotiations with the Saco Valley Teachers Association. Um, after that executive session, we um, just talked about our future meetings, which are listed here for March 25th and April 8th. And that is what I have. Thank you. Any questions for the negotiations committee? Seeing none, um, the floor is back over to Mrs. Bruni for approval of the following job descriptions. I'll make a motion that we approve the job descriptions that were presented to the board. Okay, we have a second from Mr. Sargent. Uh, just for reference, they're for school nutrition manager one, two, three, and a school nutrition assistant. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? It is unanimous. Now we sustain a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 40560 to consider a side letter that may impact the current agreement between the MS86 Board of Directors and the MS86 Administrative Association. Moved by Mrs. Bruni, seconded by Mrs. Kreutz. All in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back, everyone. I will entertain a motion to approve the side letter as discussed in executive session. Moved by Mr. Cota, seconded by Mrs. Bruni. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Now entertain a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 40568 to discuss a personnel matter. Moved by Mrs. Kreitz, seconded by Mr. Cota. All in favor? It is unanimous.